your host, Luke. Uh, these are my two fellow co-hosts. Uh, Jared, how's it going, guys? What up? I'm Kelsey. And I'd like to welcome you to the first podcast episode of... I know this is cheesy, but our, I came up with the name Reptilian Insider News. That is... The name I came up with, so that is... That's nice, man. Yeah. I was going to... Yeah, I was, that's... I was, I was thinking you are just going to leave it at the Reptilian Insider. Yeah, yeah. but... <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that's just the way I roll, whatever. No, um, no. So a little bit about myself. I'm 26. I live in the U.S. Um, I am a big paranormal... Uh, junkie and I love uh, talking about you know UFOs, aliens uh, Bigfoot uh, <laughs> anime, whatever but you know this will mainly focus on uh, the uh, paranormal I'll say and futuristic technology because that's what today's episode is based on uh the, the you guys like to share anything about yourself or no. just yeah no that that's fine that's fine Kelsey's just Kelsey yeah no I'm yeah I don't like to share that shit yeah whatever <laughs> but yeah I'm uh, I'm Jared I'm uh, 26 as well Luke and I have known each other for quite a while now and uh, I've helped him out with YouTube and whatnot before so this is my first podcast so bear with me yeah I mean it's not our First rodeo where, you know, we're not completely new to the world of uh, content, creation. Yeah, content creation. I um, do have three full years of YouTube experience. Um, and TikTok. And TikTok, yeah. And TikTok. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't look up my TikTok. It's <laughs> you, should, you should put yeah. all your links below on this. Yeah. So all of his um, links for his uh, other social medias will be below. I'm still figuring out um, the uh, show notes. That's what they're called. But um, ah. I'll figure that out. This is actually the first podcast I've ever recorded. Um, so. Well, I'm glad to be here yeah. for them. Uh, yeah, I'm not... <laughs> To, to participate. I'm new to this rodeo, right? Um, but my, uh, you know, uh, YouTube channel at least is the true believer. Um, and if you want to follow me on social media there, you'll find my social media links there, including my, uh, what is it, the TikTok. Yeah, quit, quit yeah. dangling yeah, in my front of TikTok. Us, man. I gotta yeah. look it up right now. Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's it it's literally just my name, you know, first oh, name, last name. Yeah. Last name so, do you want to start with my? Uh... Well, let's preface it by what we're doing. So, what we're doing today is Luke and I chose our top three uh, technologies from like sci-fi or movies or any types of film that we wish existed. And so, we're gonna talk about the uh, plausibility of that existing, the possibility of that. Um, how far out we think that technology is, if it's even possible, and also kind of comment on whether it's going to be good, bad for society, uh, its ra different ramifications once it comes out, and how popular it's going to be as well. And then uh, Kelsey's going to be kind of our guest here, and he's going to help commentate on yeah, comedic relief. Yeah, comedic professional relief. comedic relief. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, yeah, we. And yeah. so yeah, Luke and I chose uh, three different um, techno uh, technological like advancements that we wish were around. Um, that we have seen in TV or in movies or anything like that. So I'll let Luke take it off for the first one. Okay, so <laughs> we're starting with, uh, surely you guys have seen the movie Stargate, or the series Stargate, yep. at least. Um, Bits and pieces, yeah. To be honest with you, I've only seen the first um, Stargate movie, but... I really liked it. I've seen it like three times. It is available for free with ads, you know, if you don't have an ad blocker. On the YouTubes? On YouTube, yeah. So, nice. um, you know, long story short, they, you know, it plays into the whole ancient aliens thing where um, this government funded Egyptian archaeological team digs up a Stargate 
that uh, the alien left on Earth to connect to another planet, and it brought ancient Egyptians to mine um, whatever the material was in that movie. So I really like the Stargate thing, you know, that's the whole, you know, there's Stargate Atlantis, I don't know any of the other series, that's the only one I know of, Ooh, but shit. that... That technology to me is really cool because, you know, like, if you think about, like, a, you know, we've all heard of, like, a wormhole or, like, a black hole. And, like, you see a diagram of it. It's just, like, one portal, you know, and then that long, thin tube that lets out somewhere else in space. And, like, if, to me, like, that's what a Stargate is, right? That it just somehow however it's a black hole. yeah found a, and contains it yeah. because you know like you know if you open a black hole or not and, necessarily a black hole but a wormhole yeah what yeah. you know so you can you know transport from america to russia you well, know just by just, stepping that's as far as you would go well, we're only on well, one. Put it on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Elon Musk, get on that, right? Oh, shit. That's what's going to be on the first Starship. Yeah. Right after Joe Rogan, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my, my favorite. Um, yeah. <laughs> Spicy. Yeah. Spicy. Spicy. It can be a little more uh, risque with what you talk about on a podcast. Well, what do you but, think about uh, Elon's idea with building a tunnel, a Hyperloop? That's for America? Well, yeah, I mean, he's been building it in L.A. I, I yeah, it, I thought it was the California thing, right? Oh, I don't know. I haven't read up on it recently, but I thought, man, that'd be just what we need going from, like, L.A. to here and Denver all the way out to New York, too. Three stops, that's all I need. Like, I mean, <laughs> so, call me an educator or something but like don't they have like bullet trains that go like 200 miles an hour in like spain or something yeah but what elon musk is creating is a tunnel that is actually like a vacuum chamber uh -huh. and so it doesn't have any air in it but the trains do and so these trains are going through an extremely low pressure zone so they're actually able to go faster without the wind resistance mm -hmm. and they're also more efficient as well from my knowledge and like is it fine for humans to you know Without it experiencing any side effects it's like or a bullet train. right, yeah. right. It's just like a regular train. Because like those bullet trains go two hundred miles per hour, mm -hmm. so you know it's the, the one Elon Musk's creating goes quicker than that. Right. Yeah. Because of the technological advances and the specific tubes that they yeah. use. Yeah. I mean, so I'll, I'll give the guy. I'll give the guy one thing. He's very smart. To me, he just needs to keep his mouth shut. Oh, really? And then... <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. Yeah. Really? Tell me how you really feel. Well, okay, so we're not going to get into specifics, but, like, you know, during that Thailand cave dive or whatever, yeah. like, he was saying some yeah. pretty... Rude shit. Yeah. yeah. And I don't like stuff like that, you know, so... What, just hearing it? Well... Or seeing your idol. Like, he, he, he was diverting... <laughs> attention and you know like oh. getting involved where he didn't need to be because like yeah, yeah, yeah. rockets and dive equipment and i don't know I mean, extreme equipment man that's kind of what he deals with the biggest yeah. fail was the like gorilla glass that they had on the, the tesla truck mm -hmm. did you see that reveal those okay when they threw like the giant fucking metal ball at the window and it just shatters like of course it's gonna shatter. <laughs> okay here oh, yeah. side rant the tesla truck that wasn't a truck that was like a i don't know what that was a moon vehicle yeah yeah that that to me looked like a Bro, like a hatchback it's got climate control and like it i mean well, obviously climate control but like it, it the deal the door seals on it are yeah. good enough to withstand a vacuum. But like, how are you going to haul I, any... I guess. Her... It's also uh, good against like chemical warfare and things like that as well. So that was one of the things that they were mentioning as uh, for that truck as well. Is that the, Like you're saying, that. the seals are so good that it could keep out like, let's say someone drops... Uh, oh God. 
Yeah, like a nuclear <laughs> bomb or something like that, or radiation, and it, it'll help with that type of stuff and hmm. keep out. That but when are you going to be in that situation? situation? Yeah, well, when and you lead line it, and you know you have your oil drum of food in the back because you're a prepper, right? Yeah. <laughs> you got a Tesla Model X or Tesla truck, a cyber truck to be your get out vehicle. But like. It'd be horrible. So get getting back to the Stargate. Uh, yeah. The <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the main thing I just wanted to say is like at least in the movie, like besides getting them from like you know Earth to whatever the name of that stupid alien planet with the Egyptian gods on it. Stupid. Yeah. Just okay, the alien planet. Yeah, that's um, what I thought. The Stargate didn't have much of a plot purpose <laughs> in the, in the movie. movie. Yeah. In the show, there's a bigger plot. Like, right. I looked up the um, show, and one of the things is it's essentially one wormhole from one planet to another, and there's actually two Stargates on Earth. One, Ra, which is the uh, god yeah. of uh, the Egyptian god. Uh, he actually brought it with him in the lore. And then the other one, the Atlanteans, the ancients created on Earth. Um, so you know, like the so that's what the Stargate Atlantis. Atlantis one is from. Yeah. Like, like I said, I never saw the mm. yeah, yeah. And, TV show. And yeah, so the point of origin was brought by Ra from an unknown location. And the gate uh, became the gate used by the CGC or, C, or SGC. Um, and the point of origin gate found at, in our Antarctica solitudes, uh, now known as the Beta Gate, um, which is the original Atlantean spe uh, specified one, so the uh, um, Atlantean one. Um, the ancients, the ones created that one. And so there's actually, uh, so there's actually like uh, two gates on Earth, which is really interesting, uh, according to the show. Now, if this was reality and we had those gates here on Earth, um, it would beg the question, like, how would our gut, because normal people like us would not be able to use those gates, especially if there's a limited only, like, two of them. Like, um, so how would the government actually, like, use that and put like, a sign on it that says Atlanteans only? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something, yeah, yeah. Like, to, to me, that's, like, um, <laughs> like, I, I can see America having one, I can see Russia having one, and I can see China having one. And Japan. Yeah. Or possibly Japan. Yeah. Um, but my question to you, Luke, is why would you want this to exist? Well... What do you think the benefit to society would be if this technology was around? I mean, if we got to that point, I mean, you you would assume that our spaceship technology would be, you know, years ahead of what it is now. I mean, right now we're just, you know, barely able to... Leave our own planet. Yeah, leave our own planet. Yeah. You know, we... The, don't get me wrong, we're, you know... It's along the way, man. In, you. in our lifetimes, you know, Mars will be colonized. True. I, I'm a firm believer in that, or they'll at least... At least be some sort of colony there. Right. Which would be pretty interesting. I think, I think that was another thing, is NASA or SpaceX was already trying to... Or maybe it was an artist's conception, but they were like... Oh, they, they're trying to, they build, like, a whole city layout with the roads and the names and everything, like... And they even have the dumb center. And this boulevard and, you know, Luna Drive, like, that'd be cool. Yeah, but, but like... Armstrong Avenue. Yeah. But, like, uh, okay, so just to get into this theor theoretically, um, you know, we're dealing with string theory, right? So, like, as objects, you know, get sucked into... The black hole, the wormhole, the portal, whatever, they, you know, get really, what they think happens is they get, you know, stretched really long and thin, and then they would pop out on the other side. I mean, would that hurt the objects? What, is there a way to cancel that effect? You know, like, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I don't think a teleportation beam, you know, like you see in, like, Star Trek, you know, like, beam me up, Scotty. I, I don't think that will ever exist. I'm sorry, I, I don't. May, may, maybe it will, but I, 
Maybe at least not in my lifetime. Yeah, it might be a couple hundred years out. Because um, specifically with like the uh, the one that you mentioned, um, the way that they sent people was they basically tore down their atoms and then rebuilt them when they arrived right. again. And so yeah, it was sending... to explain it pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and you were mentioning that. Yeah, that was, yeah. that was, so we can move on to mine. One of mine is the, uh, yeah, do you want to, is the television, uh, teleportation, uh, television from Willy Wonka. But then you shrink. Yeah, do you that's, shrink? That's a weird uh, fact, like... Yeah, that is kind of weird, but that's because he didn't perfect the technology yet. Yeah. He was missing a lot of the different particles that were traveling. Well, I know, but how many drunken children do we have to risk for this? I'm willing to make that <laughs> sacrifice, Kelsey. How many, how many four-inch tall people are we going to have before it's finally well, correct? Well, I mean, that, that was so, you know, it must have been crazy back in the day when that movie came out. But, you know, they bring in this giant chocolate bar. It wasn't and they, actually and they, chocolate, Luke. <laughs> And they zap it, and then you reach in and grab it. grab it. Can you imagine that in modern society, though? Imagine your TV had that capability, and you see something on TV you want, and you're like, hey, I really like that. How would that change people? It'd be like, we'd be fat. Pretty much, yeah. You'd be like, Arby's hey, I see it. Up. Mm, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> It's magically delicious. Yeah, like, Here's my card. And all you need is to click a button on your remote, and it's linked to your uh, like, bank account. <laughs> it pays it automatically, and all of a sudden, it's... Uh, it, pops up on your TV screen, your order is ready, and all you do is reach into your TV screen, grab out the burger and your drink that you want, but and it's good to go. It's only like half the size because of the transmission. Well, know. see, the way you get around that is the producers make it larger. No, yeah, right. you have to the yeah, people produce that. The chef has to cook it larger, yeah. Yep, and totally. so and so it'll come to your <laughs> like regular size, but let's say you're watching a TV commercial for an electronic scooter that you really want or something, or your kid really wants. And you're like, well, his birthday's right around the corner. He goes and you send him to sleep. And you're like, I'm going to get this for my kid. And you go on there and there's like a, or, uh, like a catalog of different things you could buy. And he'll be like, oh, I saw that on the commercial. I want that. You buy it. And all you do is you reach into your TV screen and pull it right on out. Yeah. And wrap it up. And there's your kid's birthday gift. Every right? time you hear the mesothelioma commercial brochures go pouring out of your TV. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so, adver <laughs> so advertisers can pay to beam... Dude, that'd be interesting you're, if they're... you turned into the new form of mail. You know, that's how they sent you your mail. Here's your here's your bills. Here's your bills. Yeah, yeah just shoots it out through your TV. <laughs> we know you're watching, so now you got to pay. <laughs> I don't watch TV. <laughs> Shit's dangerous. <laughs> so, um, so that one I think is quite a far away as away. Kind of like the Stargate. I, I don't think anything... But also, exists. is there much use to that? Yeah. For consumers and and, and uh, manufacturers, is a huge use for that. I mean, I can see Amazon just Amazon? being crazy and funding technology like that. But you know, like what I see with technology like that is just you know the further death of brick and mortar stores. You know, that's true. Because it'll be kind of like uh, when you go to watch Wally. -E, you remember how those guys, like the humans, were really big and chubby, and they're just on, cruising on their little remote control hover uh, cars or whatever. Yeah, they're recliners. Yeah, yeah the hover bo lazy boys. Yeah, the lazy. Boys. I love that yeah. movie. That, 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 that was a good movie. That's technology that we need is hovering lazy boys. Oh, for real. <laughs> uh, I'll get so much Did, do, you, do you guys remember the movie? They have like this like transition where it shows like a normal human and then they like just, you know, become Plato people or yeah. whatever. They're like, ooh. <laughs> How much they blown up. <laughs> what a movie. Let's move um, on to your second one, Luke. What's your second one? Okay, so um I want one of my waifus since what 2013 2012 was uh Hatsune Miku and she was a hologram you might remember this but um so yes that technology is already here but you know like they can obviously you know improve it like Think of like a holographic movie. Did you did you just tell us that you've been dating a hologram for seven years? You mean Mary? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Mary. waifu. You yeah. married her? Holy shit! Yeah. I've never met her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When did this happen? She's she my waifu. Time? Get your own. own. Oh great. Okay. Yeah. All right, Mister. But controlling. but <laughs> but like think about that. You know, she like. Let me go outside. 
<laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you, did you ever watch Archer? Yeah, I, I, I Krieger. Krieger. Krieger? Yeah, Krieger's anime waifu. That was a hologram. Yeah. Do you remember how he had clones and like they're trying to like destroy the world or something? Yeah. And he had to fight each one of them. Well, what that was, that was they, a funny they episode. Used a hologram of Tupac, and everybody thought he was came back to life. You remember that? That was in like, I don't know, 09 or something. I thought that was in South Park. Was it? Maybe they made fun of it in South Park or something. Yeah, I'm because not sure. the technology to create holograms is actually real. Um, if you watch Mark Robert's channel, um, uh, YouTube channel, uh, he actually created a squirrel maze. And in that, he used a hologram thing you could buy off of Amazon. And he put a walnut in it, and it uses mirrors and light to project an image that looks exactly like a walnut to full with squirrels I've seen those the little like, saucer looking yeah they look like yeah saucer black looking things nice. and so they have the technology to be able to we have the technology mm -hmm. yeah to create oh, yeah, it's, just not, <laughs> it's just not mainstream like there's it's just not mainstream right so now. to me that sounds like something like Mr. Beast would have in a uh, go through the hologram maze and you'll win a million dollars or, you know, whatever. I mean, honestly, when it comes down to it, what is a hologram? Is it plasma? Is it... It's just a projection. Yeah, that's... Well, I mean, it's not just a projection. It's a hologram, Luke. Yeah. There's, there's more technology behind it. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, what... A projection is 2D. A, a projection is 2D. A hologram is 3D. Right. In Germany, they have a waterfall that goes over the tunnel when it's closed, mm -hmm. and it projects stop on one side of the tunnel. Yeah. So that the other cars can go through. I thought that was really cool. That's well, you, not. That's a projection. Right. Version. Well, you could even see projections if you go into a haunted house. Um, they'll have like uh, like fog like falling in between a doorway, and they'll project a scary image on so that we doorway. Need a, we need to walk through. Like, what would constitute it as a hologram? Then? Uh, well, here I I, I three, have it. Three D. So. I. In simple terms, hologram technology is a 3D projection which can be seen without using any special equipment such as camera or glasses. The image can be viewed from any angle. Mm -hmm. So what? So it maybe maybe that does maybe that is a hologram. Right. What? So one really cool um, thing that I saw. It's like a imagine like a wristwatch, you know, like a smartwatch. And it has like these four or five projectors, and you use your, you know, your skin or your sleeve, and it that's your smartphone. Yeah. Ha, have you seen that like well, concept? I've seen the keyboards that project onto the table. Right. Yeah. Which, you know, I'm probably at forty words per minute. I I don't know how good I would be with a holographic keyboard, yeah, the but I. The lag. <laughs> but I guess we'll cross no, my that. keyboard is lagging. Yeah. So I looked up like our hologram is possible, and it says to make a hologram of a much less stable object by using a pulse laser. And so these mm. systems have been used to produce holograms of live people. A holographic uh, portrait of Dennis Gober was produced in 1971 by a pulse ruby laser. So holograms have been around since 1971. You know, kind of like the way like R2D2 can project a hologram in Star Wars. That's the same concept, you know what I mean? And um, it's just not commercially available. I'm sure you could buy it out, out there like like Mark Rober did, but that one's not like a live a animated version, you know? Mm. I'm talking about something that's similar to like FaceTime or like uh, Skype or something Skype like that. For, yeah, basically yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. And you're able to communicate like that and you that can talk get, to them. That would be pretty cool. I think it would get really fucking annoying having your mom pop up your wristwatch all the time and just a little hologram <laughs> and she's right there it's like fuck man go away like did you take your vitamins today Addy? <laughs> <laughs> <I don't... laughs> <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah i mean i think that would get really annoying it seems like you know the the notifications and stuff the the way that it would work as a phone but i don't know it would probably make the quarantine a whole hell of a lot easier. That is true. Having the three hologram thing. Yeah. Come on, Steam. Come on, Steam. <laughs> well, like, 
in, you know, there's like stupid uh, AR, you know. Yeah. What What's the one where you have the glasses? The VR. VR, sorry. Um, yeah, AR is augmented reality, kind of like that Pokemon game. Right. Um, and where you're able to walk around like that Pokemon mobile game. You're able to walk around and it yeah. augments your reality. Yeah. VR, um, I played a lot with my sister when she was in California. And her and I were able to play a lot of different games, board games, strategy games using... Did you play Beat Saber? Uh, no, I didn't have that one. I just had the basic version of it, just so I could play a little games with my sister. Like, and, like uh, I... that was really fun. But, yeah, can you imagine, like, a hologram being able to do that? That'd be pretty well, cool. Well, not having to wear shitty glasses. Yeah, exactly, because yeah. a hologram is you don't need to wear that type of thing. Yeah. Like, like did, in your room. did you guys like, uh, that, that just makes me think of, like, you know, Ready Player One. Yeah. I liked it. I, you know, but like, oh, what, that was what, the one that was filmed all first person? Or no, that was, no, it, it, uh, it was third person, but you know, the, the whole story is like, there's the dreamscape or the, you know, this big worldwide system. Yeah. Like that, a complex, yeah. um, you know, you need a VR headset. And, you know, like, you have this weird treadmill thing oh, yeah, in I your... Oh, yeah, talking about, yeah. And it, you know, you move around on that, yeah, it, it's, and... It's like a dish. It's like a right. treadmill that you can walk around. Yeah, that can move in 360 things. degree. Yeah, and then... And you, that's how your character moves. I, I really like that I'd concept. i play a game trying that. Yeah, mm -hmm. like... To me, just the cost of that, to me, is like in the thousands. Yeah. Like, they could probably make it with the technology they have right now. Yeah. But with the, the holograms, you mean? Cost yeah, but like, you know, with the hologram thing, you need all that space. But if you have VR, you just need the headset. You know, yeah. and as the technology improves, like, in... You know, newer movie, movies, they just have, like, sunglasses or, like, yeah. Google Glass. Right. You know, like, yes, that was... Or even in Westworld, if you guys have watched that, the just, you know, what are they called? The contact lenses that you just pop yeah. in. Well, the one that kind of stands out to me the most, kind of what you're talking about, is Blade Runner 2049. And in his room, he had, like, a, a bar system on the roof, and he had a, actually a holographic girlfriend and it was an artificial intelligence that was actually his girlfriend in Blade Runner. Better and, not be Hatsune Miku. <laughs> and so he was able to go home she after doing me. everything and all his detective work <laughs> and he was able to go home to his girlfriend in his, in his house, you know, and they had like tracks where the little camera projector thing was on the roof and it would like move around with him wherever the hologram was and it was able to communicate with him and and do that. So that was kind of. You need one of those. Yeah, Where have you been? been? <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> you haven't been home for two hours. Thirty-six <laughs> seconds. Who cameras, cameras comes <laughs> out of the bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> there she is. Oh um, shit! I'm in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Just, I think there's a lot of potential there, but like, you know, besides like. I personally don't have much use for it, but I can see the benefits. Yeah. Like to me, like one of the coolest things would be like, like a holographic movie, you know? Oh, sh like player ready player one. Right. Well, that's VR, but you know, like, you could be in it and right. Like, yeah. like you're so, sitting in a seat and it's just happening all around you. Yeah. Like, I think they have something like that. I mean, you know, like, maybe IMAX will come out with that first. Disney World. Disney would have that shit. But, um... Yeah, I'll move on to my second one. So my second one is, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, sorry, one second. Uh, do you mean that Futurama one? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm thinking like uh, Matrix-like learning, so it's uh, subliminal instant learning. Uploaded. Yep, yeah. and it just uploads into your brain, and I think that would be really cool, and that would definitely benefit I... humanity. And they're already working on this. They call it neurofeedback, and um, so they're, uh, they're, they're basically saying soon it will be 
uh, possible to delete a person's unwanted and dramatic memories and also enhance learning. Um, they did say like a fully uh, fledged like plug and play kind of learning skill um, that was similar to like the Matrix where you had an actual port in your brain. Ew. Is yeah, <laughs> it, it it's a long way off, but it's not impossible. They said uh, like the the technological advances. <laughs> Um, for like a brain machine interface using like small microchips in the brain. Yeah. Um, they are starting to get closer to that, especially with advancements yeah. in neuroscience. Oh, I, I, I think they're, that's decades away. Yeah. Like, I, not, I, I think that's, that's, yeah, like I think 20, 30 years because now. like, I do know, cause I've read this where like they grew some kind of cells and they attached to the electrodes. Yeah. They attached to like microchips and they were able to. Just be wild shit. Interact with them yeah, somehow. Yeah, like, like a coax port on your back of your neck or three RCA cable. <laughs> like, I mean, like what, it, it, what does it's, the brain run on? USB-C? Like, yeah. You, like it, it's going to get to the point where you're born and you have a microchip. Hmm. Like whether, you know, it's like in a totalitarian government where it's like China and, you know, like they... Have you guys played any Cyberpunk 2077? I have not. No. Oh my god. I've seen I've That's seen amazing. the glitchy mess. Oh, it's an excellent game, man. I mean like, Okay, when it first came out. It's just wild, yeah, I know what you mean, like having a chip port on the side of your head and just be had like boop, I know Quick. how to aim a gun now or you know. <laughs> I know how to do kung fu like the matrix. Yeah, like I mean aiming a gun pretty simple. Though. Well like you, you, you could download and learn how to speak Mandarin, mm -hmm. you know, or Spanish, just like that. Yeah, you but know? what's the price? That's that's gonna have a price. DLC. Yeah, exactly. Language. Yeah, Language. Your, your DLC. trial has ended for your left leg. Your <laughs> <laughs> leg will now cease operation. Yeah. Ten, five, Goes four, lip. three, two, one, and then you just fall. <laughs> a small zap in the side. And yeah, that'd be. I don't Please. like it. Please renew your subscription future. for uh, mathematics. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a part of that future. Yeah, that, there'd be a lot of commerce and yeah, a lot of lot of uh, capitalism would definitely take over in that. Well, instance. they put they put ID chips in, like I guess in Sweden they were starting to do that. Sweden. Sweden. The, the most. Welcome you know, to Sweden. Forward place, you know, like I don't know. Just like I'm not. Up for the idea of being chipped like or tagged like a cow, you know. I mean, sure, if it had great benefits, and like maybe if it, you know, sure, you can speak Mandarin, but what price does that cost, right? You know, maybe those brain, those cells do attach to the electrode, but are they chicken cells or are they, you know, what type of stem cell is it, and is it gonna? meld with the human your human body correct mm -hmm. i don't know there's a little it's a ways off you're right it will happen but it's a ways off but the other thing is like uh, you know this is purely theoretical but can like somebody like hack into your brain exactly you know like like, like that trial thing do, does that Georgia open that trial? door right you know like I, I don't know. What's going to be controlled by the chip? If you suddenly can speak Mandarin, does your brain know Mandarin? Or does the chip control your brain, control your mouth, you know? I mean, I, I mean maybe downloading a language is, you know, not realistic, Minimal but uh, like wow. more, more memory or... Uh, More memory. I, I, I don't know. Stronger graphics card. <laughs> I want to plug one of those GTX fuckers into my brain. <laughs> Overclock that bitch. <laughs> Typed update. <laughs> we'll, we'll have some big heads too because we'll have all the brain chips in there. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you when your son turns 21 or 17, whatever the fuck it is, you have to give him one of the chips. You. <laughs> <laughs> this is great grandfather's old coaxial part. Ew. It's, yeah. so, it's, it's so old. It's got two thousand and tens on it. Uh. But yeah, it also begs the question of privacy as well. 
because if it affects your memory and your learning ability, that means that it probably has access to those parts of your brain as yeah. well. So when is it legal or how do they regulate that? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it would be extremely easy for these companies just to be like, oh, like on your computer, oh, we know your search history, right? Well, it would be the same thing. Now we know your memories. How are they going to use that? How are they going to market that? Are they going to sell that off? Have like, you seen any of Black Mirror? Um, I've seen a few episodes, but not much of it. Oh man, there's one that is all about the, the brain chips, and it's great. The brain chips. The brain chips. That should be like a superfood. Brain chips. The brain chips. Yeah. <laughs> I got my brain chips today. I'm set to go. <laughs> so it's a dystopian sci sci-fi anthology series. Um, and it brings up the un unanticipated consequences of new technologies. That's what it is talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. Like uh, one of them has Miley Cyrus in it. And it's it's an interesting. I, I recommend you watch it. Yeah, it's really good. It no, makes like you think. it makes you think about the future. It makes you think, you know, about how you would have. The Right. I so I I know this is a side topic, but I um, there's another sci-fi series. I this is getting into aliens, but uh, uh, there's this new. It's like Western alien show. Um, Cowboys versus aliens, starring Daniel Craig. <laughs> oh my god, that was a great. That, that was a good movie. Yeah. I mean, it's so, it, it, flo it flopped for some reason. Like it didn't do that well. Well, it's like Sharknado. Why the hell did that blow up in everybody's face? Oh, uh, okay. So it's called Resident Alien. Oh, and I've heard of that. it's on Sci-Fi, and um, so it's like in you know the 1800s or whatever. You know, oh. imagine it's like old Western town. You know, just oh, okay. generic. You know, but like this alien crashes down and. He gets out of the flying saucer or, or ship or whatever, and he shoots the local... Why is he trying to be a saucer, dude? Yeah, why <laughs> yeah. is he a saucer? Yeah. So he shoots the sheriff. Spoilers, by the way. And uh, he has to assume that guy's identity. Hmm. But there's people in the town that... Oh, I've seen this one. Yeah, he's yeah. The cop. Yeah. Oh, that's... Yeah. No, well, he's the sheriff. Yeah. But, like, he has to solve like these different like ironically or whatever you want to say another sheriff in the town got murdered so that's part of like the i mean it, i i just really like the look of the shows i yeah, guess have you seen it i've seen trailers oh yeah it's worth it man i watch how many seasons does it it, it's only on one Man, I hate that how they make like one a show and it's only like one season, and it just yeah, it seems like a really cool idea. Oh, and there's a huge like niche following it behind it, and then whoever the producers are, are like, no, nah, I'm not good enough. Like, yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> just pull the plug. Don't pull it, please. They yeah. they do. Okay, so we're getting back into anime, but they they do that with anime. Oh yeah. 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 Like, they'll you know bait you with like 12 episodes and they're like oh didn't make enough money right. no second season bye mm -hmm. you know just uh. there's a lot of anime out there yeah are there any good sci-fi anime i should watch like i don't know the space ones i've watched uh cowboy Spaceship bebop Yamamoto. <laughs> cowboy bebop so long cowboy bebop that's yeah good. that one's an old one yeah but it's good um, it's a classic, man. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hate. Eurecta Seven. I watched. Uh, or I tried to get into. What is it? S Starship or spaceship Yamamoto, and it's all. It's literally like a World War Two battleship that goes into space. It's the funniest <laughs> ship. The first episode. Like, what the fuck is going on here? But um. Like, yeah. That uh, okay. So that kind of reminds me of. It's called Girl Zoom Panzer. Oh yeah. It's these girls, you know, sixteen, seventeen, and there's different teams from different you know nations, 
you know, like America and Russia and Germany. Yeah. And like they're, they have to fight each other using these tanks. Yeah. And um, they're uh, like. I know the story, man. Yeah, I've seen this stuff like for War Thunder. The game. But, but what I was getting to sure. is they're on these giant aircraft carriers. Oh, yeah. I, I kind of like that idea. If, if the world did flood, just build giant, sh you know, city, floating city ships. Yeah. yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah. Like, I mean. And, like, okay, like with aircraft carriers now, I know this because I studied, uh, I had to write a paper on the Nimitz class air, aircraft carriers. Nice. Um, they, they're. They run on a nuclear core, mm -hmm. and if they sense that, you know, they're always out at sea, obviously, um, they they sense, like, you know, it's going critical or something. They just flood the chamber with seawater. Yep. Um, and, like, they've, it's, you know, if you are able to hook that aircraft carrier up to a city's power grid, it could power this entire city. Like, that's how much energy is in that core. Yeah. And I mean, but you're moving a giant ship with most of it. Well, yeah. <laughs> like the the Nimitz class, at least they apparently is bigger and more like they needed less <laughs> nuclear material and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Um, how to say this? My I your brother's uncle. <laughs> what? Well, I know a guy that... Your sister cousin? Yeah. <laughs> I know a guy that um, he's been on aircraft carriers. I mean, that, yeah. that to me is sick. Yeah, one of my coworkers was too. I got you. Yeah. Like, no, I've, I've met people that uh, were on nuclear submarines. Have you guys seen the original 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? The Jules Verne. Uh, was it black and white? Or? No, it was it was color. The is that with Captain Nemo? Yeah, and it had like the the beautiful Nautilus, the ship, and everything. So and the whole the whole thing behind that ship was like this very secret like power source, right? And one of the people on the boat ended up seeing the the power source, but yeah, like. I don't know. It was just like, you know, we need that technology. Mm -hmm. um, so the only exposure I have to Captain Nemo is, you know, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Because, nice, yeah. you know, Captain Nemo is, they get on his ship. You know, it's like this giant, I love that movie. I love you know, that too, But it's like this long. The, the sea knife, what was the name of it? I'll look it up. Poseidon's Centaur or something. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. Like, it's, you know, Captain yeah. Nemo's ship. Yeah. The Nautilus. The Nautilus? Yeah. Yeah. The sword of the Centaur. Apparently it's a submarine, but, you know, in this, it's like a lot, you know, biggest ship you can imagine, you know. They sail that shit right up the, the Venice Canals, too. Yeah. I love that thing. Well, it had Sean Connery in it, right? Mm -hmm. I forget who, like, they had some stupid kid in it as, like, Sean Connery's, you know, that's the father-son. Oh. What was his name? Um, the League. I mean, in general, I loved the movie, you know, it had so much, you know, like, there was a vampire lady, there was, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, Gray. That, I remember reading that book when I was young, and man, when I saw the movie, I was like, oh my god, they had Dorian Gray in the fucking movie, it was the best shit. It was so cool to me. Because, you know, the whole painting and everything, that was the giant, yeah, that was the giant, you know, failure. Yeah, so there's, there's, uh, Quartermain, Captain Nemo, uh, Vampire Chemist Mina Harker, 
And you know that invisible guy? Yeah. Um, He's actually an Avenger. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's... The kid is Tom Sawyer. Or is supposed to be Tom Sawyer. That's his name. And like... Who is the actor? It wasn't one of the Wilsons, was it? Did your phone die? That's problematic. That is yeah, it's, <laughs> problematic. It's saying we got... We're critical. Uh, we got about 15 minutes. Uh, oh, so there's a limit to the recording. Yeah, I thought it was two hours, but... Uh, oh, that's fine. Apparently it's an hour. We... Yeah, so let's move on to, is it yours? Um, I think it was yours, because we were talking about neurofeedback and all that stuff. So I think it's... Oh, that's, wow, we did a big old round robin on that. Yeah, you guys went way <laughs> off course. I just let you guys go. I was just like, all right. I rolled with it. Let yep. it yeah, I think it's Luke's third one. What's your third one, Luke? Okay, so you know the movie Inception? Mm -hmm. Get that thing situated. Well, I'm there we trying go. to Claps for Luke. Oh. keep going. Um, but uh, it's called the Passive Device Portable Automated Somnasin Intravenous Device. But it's, you know, the movie Inception. The, the vein thing that they... Yeah, you... that allows you to go into people's dreams. Yeah. And like... Implant a memory or that is, like man, that's some invasive shit. That is invasive. Yeah. Why would you want that technology to exist? I just thought it would be cool to uh, to go search around Kelsey's dreams. Yeah, oh, see what he's thinking about. out on the couch and Luke's like plugging it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, time to see what he's up to. <laughs> time for my daily dose of uh, Kelsey TV. Man, Jared shows up and Luke's like right there. <laughs> I just, just thought it was. Damn it, not again! <laughs> on the floor. It looks just covered in drool. It's like, what the hell is he watching? What is, what what is he, Kelsey dreaming? What is he dreaming about? Yeah. <laughs> Turns out Kelsey's dreaming of a big old, a uh, baby back ribs. That's right, man. <laughs> big old dinner at lob uh, Red Lobster. I just right. thought it was a cool oh, I mean, machine or you know, technology. Or like, uh, if you guys played Cyberpunk, you would know what the brain dance is. It's basically that, but you know, you can, like. Relive memories and stuff. It's That's like of, Assassin's Creed stuff. Yeah. Where it's like the memory of your ancestors in your DNA. Yeah. Well, that'd be kind of cool. So this, the intro, the passive vein thing. Uh-huh. That's like, uh, I mean, that would be cool. That's, there's a thing called uh, lucid dreaming. Yeah, right, lucid right. Dreaming, yeah. And you can see yourself in the, in the dreams and... So right. I haven't ever done it. I'd love to do it. But that and like uh, the you've tanks. You've never dreamed before? I can't force myself to. I don't have that much focus. Not while I'm sleeping. Like. Well, there, there's like, there's like people that train to like, you know, like they say if you like can realize you're in a dream that you can take control of it. Are these the people that we need to test this system on, just like the movie? I mean, sure, why not? But no, this is a real thing. Where these people at least say that they can, like... Oh, no, like... the lucid dreaming, yeah. Right. Yeah, no, I knew that. I thought you meant the passive mission. I'm like, why don't I have one, man? Well, let's go pick one up. I know what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> I mean, like... It's plugging into my buddy's dreams. Let's it's it's not the most. What plans are gonna be? I'm gonna fuck him up. <laughs> it's not the most realistic thing, but um, you know, at least in the movie Inception, you know, like they start dealing with like what's real life, what's um. Yeah, what well, what level of the dream yeah, are you? The layers, because man. you know they go to the fourth Bro, level. I, I had to watch that movie about ten fucking times to understand it. Like, to so truly understand it. I was like, man, I love this movie. So at, at at the very end, you know that totem he had where spins. To me, it like wobbled. You know, at the very end, because he. Yeah, that's supposed. But to be but he movie. also. In his memory, he didn't see his kids' faces. But at the, 
at the last scene, he does see his kids' faces. So, to me, he was in real life. So, without, you know, divulging any more secrets of that, though. Yeah, spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> spoilers Try podcast. Go out and watch it yourself. Like, yeah. <laughs> they, they wouldn't understand it without seeing the movie. Right, I know. Yeah, you kind of have to be on the end, for, especially for Inception. And holy shit. Yeah. Have you seen the South Park? Uh, no. Take out. <laughs> we we need a fireman because he can bring a ladder into the tree <laughs> to go to the next level, and then they they bring in like this pizza delivery guy, and he's like, "Did one of you order a pizza? No. no? Then I'm going in." <laughs> and he runs into the room, oh, has man. the pizza, like, <laughs> huh. "Who are you?" I'll have to watch it. Yeah, it's called in sheep shin. In sheep shin. Uh, <laughs> the sheeple. And the like, sheeple. like, it, it's a great episode. I I love South Park. It's you know, yeah. to me they've gone kind of stupid and off track uh, as of late. But the older ones are great. Right. Yeah, like they're on like Tegrity Farms and yeah. 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 Let let let's not mention so any more into that show. because. Um, but yeah, I mean community guidelines and whatnot. My so. summer bucket list. Let's do let's do these podcasts, man. Let's let's get out there and get some get some podcasts done. Gain a following, you know. With you know, not to toot my own horn and whatnot, yeah, but like I I, I want to be. You get your people. I'll get my people. I want to be get his people. His I'm not person. saying I want to be. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm. I want to be go. like a, you know famous YouTuber as big as like Markiplier or something, but like even if I had thousands or tens of thousands of followers, I'd you know, like yes, my old one got deleted due to mysterious circumstances yeah, that I, I won't that. go into. Um, Thanks YouTube. Fingers in the air. Yeah. Like, three specific fingers. Three, <laughs> yeah. 328 subs, you know. 78,000 views, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't like it's, wasn't nothing, but, a lot of of footage on there too, yeah, yeah, like 600 videos, yeah, Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was fake, but whatever, um, let, let's go to Jared's last one, all right, so my last one is, uh, personalized space travel, so, like, what do you guys think about that, and how far out do you think that would be, what, like, catching a flight? Yeah, like you, you could Do you mean like fly. SpaceX? Yeah. Well, I was thinking, uh, yes, I know SpaceX is doing that as well. I was actually looking that up. Uh, uh, Virgin Galax, uh, Galaxy is also doing a, something uh, similar as well. Yeah. So there's SpaceX and uh, Virgin doing that. Um, but I was more talking about like uh, kind of the Futurama. I don't know if you've seen Futurama. Oh, show. yeah. Yeah, where they have like even farmers yeah even farmers have like the ability to have their own spaceship it's like a car well, yeah. you know? but like and instead of, instead of having cars they have spaceships and they're able to travel from city to city I'm or sure. travel lots of different uh, places so eventually yeah and I thought that was really interesting and I actually I think that should be really heavily regulated though no no let everybody have one <laughs> well it's just like it's like drones you know, like at the How's start. Like it's more like cars. How is that anything like drones? Well, just like, you know, you'd have people trying to fly over like you military what? bases and whatnot. Well, and get, well it'd right be now. regulated just like the air industry. You know? Right. You wouldn't have limitations. Or your car. You, you need a license car. to drive a car. Yeah, but you can't, it's not like you could drive into a military base, right? So you, it's going to be the same. Kind of I mean, you could. Issues. You could ram the gate, you know but, what? you know, That's not gonna work then out you well. get arrested. You know what, Jared? I'll one up you and say, how about the George Jetson car that folds into a briefcase? Yeah, that one was pretty cool. That would be even better. Whoa. 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 Where'd it go, man? Like, Whoa. <clears throat> so I did look up this question, like, can a civilian uh, launch a rocket into space? And so, yes, you can. Yep. There have been. That flat earth guy. Uh, yeah, so there's other, uh, other ones like that. So in 2004, there's a civilian space called Exploration Team, and they're the only amateur rocket that actually made it past 100 kilometers in, uh, out of the atmosphere. No shit. And so it's not the limitation according to law. The limitation is 
the funding and, 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 and yeah, the money, you know what I mean? Well, you know what I mean? The possibility. Rocket science can be built in a, a rocket can be built in a backyard. Yes. So, but imagine like, uh, imagine GMC competing with Ford and they have their own individual rockets they could go out and buy. Right. And then now you have the ability to go up in space, you know, and travel to Mars to the colonies over there and like take a, take a trip out there, you know, like a oh, two week trip or something, you know, I think that would be pretty cool. So, so this guy, Madman Hughes, he was a quote-unquote flat earther, and he got funding from all these flat earthers to build this rocket to, you know, see if the earth had a curve and whatnot. Oh, yeah. And he built three rockets. Yeah, and he hurt himself each time, right? He died. The last time. Yeah, the last time. But the, the first, first time. two times, <laughs> he, you know, successfully built the... You can look at footage of it, and, you know, he just shot up. Well, and, yeah, I've heard that the amount of force that he had leaving the ground broke his back. Oh. Yeah. I mean... On takeoff. Like, yeah. Just, he, was, he was hurting before he even got to the ground. <laughs> like, I mean, he, he you thought that... You build a rocket in your backyard, but... You have to get all the mathematics right. I wouldn't trust. ride it. Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the guy that... This is a guy that thought the Earth was a f flat... Pizza disc. Yeah, well, so, why you know. was he even going into space if he thought it was flat? Anyway? Yeah. Because I mean, he wanted to, to prove us. To see it. To sure. But I mean, he didn't. He didn't understand orbital mechanics. He he wasn't gonna. He wasn't gonna come back. What you don't want to get into chemtrails, Kelsey? No, no. What? So what did he use for like? His air system. Did he just grab his grandma's oxygen tank and think that's <laughs> Not sure. I don't know how he built that. What was I mean, it? I'm pretty sure you can't buy rocket fuel or jet fuel Actually, or whatever. You can. You can. Yeah, you can buy jet fuel. Oh, yeah, you could buy no. jet fuel. Okay. fuel. Yeah. Um, what was his name? Madman Hughes. Madman Hughes. Yeah, he's a wild guy, man. That, I mean... Have, he, have he you got, heard of him? He got what was coming for him. I mean, oh, so he built steam rockets. So he actually was using steam rather than, uh, rather than like. Yeah, was, but the whole thing is he was a flat earther. He was, yeah. yeah, okay. I, well, it doesn't make any difference whether you use jet fuel or rocket right, fuel right. or steam. steam. That's what we're talking about. It's like what propulsion method did he use? He used steam. So interestingly enough, DARPA is trying to make a steam rocket. Mm -hmm. That's and there's conspiracy theories about them. About DARPA? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Right. I uh, did did I ever tell you guys about Bryce? He was a guy that thought that like there was a sun simulator up there. I I met him at. Uh, what is a sun simulator? So like he, he thought our like, he thought it, it was like this giant satellite ray or these little hatchlings under a heat lamp. I knew yeah, <laughs> that like that our sun was dying. And it was like this large setup of like mirrors or whatever. That reflects off of yeah. other Yeah. No, he, he believed in like chemtrails and whatnot. Uh, so, you know, this guy, you know, I, I got along great with him. Good guy on everything. <laughs> I'm just saying that. I'm surprised to hear that after you just explained it. Like, yeah. yeah like, oh, like, oh, you're actually really good friend. <laughs> well, I'm so I'm a sure. conspiracy theorist, so you know I I get along great with other that, conspiracy that makes theorists. Sense. So, that makes total sense, man. You know, that's just how I am. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So we're hitting the one hour mark. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank my lovely co-hosts uh, Gerard and Kelsey. Woo <laughs> um, good friends of mine. Uh, we hope you like the podcast. We'll be back again more. Yes, anymore. Reptilian Insider News. Ooh, yep. Reptilian Inside News. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I don't know if there's a comment section or anything like that, but let us know what yeah. there is. Well, I mean, can they, they can comment rest? on my YouTube videos to drive engagement, or they can well, comment uh, on the on my Twitter page. I don't uh, care. There you go. Yeah. Drop, drop the tag. Well, I was yeah. going to say, like, comment what... Technology you think uh, will be advancing soon? And yeah, it would be yeah. cool in the future. Yeah, yeah like uh, futuristic technologies from uh, sci-fi or TV or film. What's your favorite one? Which one do you think is the most plausible? 
Um, so yeah, we want to hear back from you guys in any way, shape, or form. So yeah, let us know how we did for our first podcast. Yeah. And uh, well, I felt we did pretty good. So, so yeah, um, it, yeah. We're so we're uh, nearing the end. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a good night and stay safe out there. Thank you, everybody. Bye.